So Beanstalk is this fun little tool um, that is a fast work queue. It's uh, got a generic interface so you can use it between platforms and its original design was to reduce the latency of web page views by doing slow things outside of the web request cycle. And one of the reasons it's really fast is because it's based on the memcache protocol. So that's pretty cool. To install it, your package manager has it. Brew install Beanstalk, yum install Beanstalk, app get install Beanstalk, you've got it. Um, and then to run it, you type Beanstalk D and it, it runs. Get it, it's easy. Using it is pretty easy. This is the uh, kind of standard Ruby gem for uh, using it. And so you create a Beanstalk pool and you put things in it and then later you reserve them and do them and then delete them from the queue and there that's it it's pretty easy so I've got a contrived example app uh, DHH says maybe local is like spotting oil on the moon yes it has value but it's just too costly to extract with available human technology well great I thought I'd make a really cool uh, location-based services app it's called near me and it's going to give me a list of recommendations of everything that's near me that might be cool. So uh, that's my contrived example app. So we've got, we've got some difficult problems to solve. We've got some big data, double digit record counts. We've got some heavy duty math to do. I mean, this is geolocation, right? And, uh, you know, we're going to send some notifications out someday. So yeah, that, that's also something you don't want to do in real time. So I wrote this class here that is a generic interface for Beanstalk that lets me say I want to do something and, and it'll do it later. It uses uh, send and some other stuff. Um, like this little chunk down here, heavy fine, that's terrible too. Don't use this. Um, Should we just turn the lights off for a moment? Read Sweet. Well, you don't need to read it, but yeah, you can turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> this is all on uh, GitHub if you want to look at it, but it's terrible. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, I wrote it because I didn't want to write this stuff twice. And then I've got a worker, right? So this is my worker. It's a rake task. It loads the environment, and it runs that. So. I'm passing it a JSON blob, and this could be on a totally separate environment in a totally separate language, and it would work. So I've got a demo for you, and we're going to not do it in that order. But there's the GitHub URL for this code. And is running. So just to show you why we need Beanstalk, I'm going to go ahead and create a point of interest in our app here and it's going to geocode that and it's going to reach out to the internet and do a bunch of stuff so that's going to be kind of slow. Partially because of the sleeps that are in there. <laughs> that's not refresh. So that actually didn't work. But you saw it was kind of slow. So I'm going to go ahead and start Beanstalk. And restart my web server. And... Alright. Break worker. Apparently I broke this.
By the way, this is this is Ruby 193 with uh, with the performance tuning, so it's really fast, which is good because I fail really fast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is pretty crazy, right? Is that loading the Rails environment that fast? Yeah, that's um, incredible. That is. That is. All yeah, it's a constant. But I think it was in, it was inside oh, your class. That's right. Yep. Um, it was a constant inside the class that you defined in that really long thing. Okay. This will work. That's not really how I should have done that. But I changed a bunch of this stuff today. So there we go. You know, clear. Because, you know, it loads the environment really fast anyway. <coughs> so now, we've got the installed. And we've got Beanstalk D running with some stuff, because I don't want you people messing with me. <laughs> and oops. So we've got some crap in here. Got the mellow mushroom. And that geocoded and that worked fine. So let's take a look at our users. Okay, and we're gonna go over here and some really lame version of Hacker News is gonna hit us. And there we go. We created some uh, some users, and it's gonna go geocode all their home addresses. <coughs> And we can see it's doing that nice in the background. And, you know, we're reaching out to the internet. And uh, the other thing it's doing is it's creating recommendations. So if something's within five miles of you, then it creates a recommendation. So, you know, lots of heavy lifting with all this data. And there we go. So. This, this guy here, he's got some recommendations of places near him. So that's kind of the stuff you can do with, uh, with Beanstalk. And <coughs> geocoding and contrived software examples. And just so that you can see that I actually did uh, geocode some stuff. This is... Uh, the Broad Ripple Brew Pub, and it's near the Brew Pub in Developer Town. And this is someone that lives near the Brockway, and they got the Brockway and the Mire and stuff. And I'll show you the seeds too. So, no geocoding in there, and you can look at the code. That's it. So, if you want to look at the code and play with the stock sound, there is the URL. Why would I use Beanstalk instead of Starling, SQS, whatever your um, mostly it's really easy to, to get going. Um, is you can push any kind of text onto it, and if you add some more commands, to more crap onto when you run it, you can push pretty large objects through it, um, which you shouldn't, because they have to go through the wire and stuff, and they might get lost. But it, uh, it handles retries and stuff. So if I had uh, left this worker running and, and killed it mid-job and then started it back up, it would say, oh, I never finished that job. I'll go ahead and do it again. Um, you start the worker again, so it's just going to pick up all the queue, right? Yeah. Did you stop it? Uh, I stopped it, but I didn't have to. 
so I can do some more seeding. So is it basically just like a CD server with some sockets in the background? Yeah. It doesn't use any kind of like persistence engine, like Reddit's, um, anything like that. No, it's it's all standalone. It's got a bin log, a write head log which I have turned on here, so you can have it write to a file. Um, so we can keep it from losing its crap. And the, w the way it works is um, if it gets like a SIG term, like you're rebooting the machine or whatever, since it's a write ahead log, it'll go ahead and flush it to the disk before it dies. So you shouldn't lose anything with it. Uh, kind of like Redis, except you know, um, if you're using like rescue, and you kill Redis, and you kill it hard, it only ri it writes in the on the back end. It writes later, so you can lose data that way. So it's a little bit more robust than like rescue and a Redis-based store. And really, this this uh, this is so fast that uh, if I had taken the sleeps out, you would have never known that anything happened. <laughs> Are you guys using this in frame? No. Are you using delayed job in frame? We're using delayed job. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Cool.